Welcome. Welcome to worship on this Sunday in the midst of the Christmas season. We are blessed that you have joined us for this quiet Christmas service. This is sort of an unplugged version of what we normally do. Today we gather for just a few minutes after the initial rush of unwrapping gifts and family Zoom calls and watching a Christmas story to rest in God's peaceful presence together. And why are we here this morning? We are here because a town of little consequence became hope. We are here because long labor into the night became peace. We are here because a baby born among cattle became joy. We are here because a child grown became love. We are here because the song of justice that Mary sings still rings in our hearts. We are here because the good news of Christmas is meant to be shared. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses of you we have caught throughout the season of Advent and now the season of Christmas. 
We thank you for the glimpses of your gifts of hope, love, joy, and peace. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of separation, and struggle, even when we have not been sure of tomorrow, you have ignited the light within us, and we have glowed with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us in this season of Christmas and beyond to continue to proclaim far and wide that the time has come for the light of your love to be among all people. Amen. Hi everyone, I'm glad that you're with us for this quiet Christmas service. I'm at home this morning, relaxing as I hope most of you are as well. You know, even though we urge ourselves to take it slow through the season of Advent, to pause and ponder the sacred story of Christ's birth, I imagine that most of us still found the last few weeks as busy as ever, as stressful as ever, and as full as ever. And on top of that, of course, we had to deal with making holiday plans in the midst of a pandemic. Some of us were able to meet with family and friends on Christmas Day. Some of us found ways to visit relatives in nursing homes and in the hospital. Some of us, of course, stayed home, perhaps celebrating the day in a new way, finding space for new rituals and traditions to fill that space, usually taken up by grandchildren and nieces and nephews, the whirlwind of paper and gifts being unwrapped, the gathering for a big meal. We didn't have a chance, of course, to gather in our sanctuary on Christmas Eve, but some of you did gather for a few moments on the front steps of our church to leave behind a sign of Christ's light for others to see, celebrating the birth of that light and God's love into the world in a new way. And many of you paused to take time to join us for our online Christmas Eve services. On top of all that, if you were anything like my family, you still spent the day cooking and opening presents and lingering on Zoom calls with loved ones far away, ending the day perhaps huh, just as tired and weary as ever. The writer Leslie Leland Fields introduces her Christmas poem, Let the Stable Still Astonish, with these words. How many Christmases have you survived? It's a heavy weight to carry the expectations of tiny snow villages on mantles, wreaths on every door, anxiety that your chosen gifts will not please. The travail of beginning a family tradition, which then must be kept until, yes, we have a special meal and activity for nearly every day. It's astonishing that we do this to ourselves every year, and every year we vow to be simpler next year, to buy one gift, to relish the presence of one another most, to attend every worship service, to create the space we need to find wonder again. And we don't. But I believe it's still there astonishment. I share this poem in hopes it will revive what may be exhausted. I wrote it many years ago, and it has turned up around the world in the most surprising places. Its words redeemed a particularly difficult Christmas, and I send it to you now, hoping it will do the same for you. I invite you to listen now to Let the Stable Still Astonish by Leslie Fields. Let the stable still astonish, straw dirt floor, dull eyes, dusty flanks of donkeys, oxen, crumbling crooked walls, no bed to carry that pain, and then the child, rag wrapped, laid to cry in a trough. Who would have chosen this? Who would have said, yes, let the God of all the heavens and earth be born here in this place? Who but the same God who stands in the darker, fouler rooms of our hearts and says, Yes, let the God of heaven and earth be born here, in this place. I brought my tree down to the shore The garland and the silver star to find my peace and grieve no more to hear 
heal this place inside my heart on every branch i laid some breath and hungry birds filled up the sky they rang my bells around my head they sang my spirit back to life one tiny child can change the world one shining light can show the way through all my tears for all i've lost there's still my joy there's still my joy for christmas day My friends, it is done. The news has been shared. A child is born. He is the light of the world. But that is just the beginning of the story. A story that has not yet ended. A story that includes us. A story of which we are a part. So we go out now to live that story. To tell of the hope that is being born among us this Christmas day. To share the love of the season with the world. To be agents of peace in times of trouble. And to sing songs of deep and abiding joy. Go in peace. Merry Christmas.